everyone and welcome to our Amir Recharge, March 23rd, 2023. Let me go with you about some housekeeping rules and then we'll start us off. Make sure that you keep your mic muted unless you're the presenter, because if not, we're not going to be able to hear you. Feel free to type questions in the chat section and we're here to support you and answer those questions. If you have not registered to this session, go do so at the Professional Development System using session number 269910 or clicking on the link that Miss Debbie Pingle placed on the chat. Remember to do the remote check-in code PSJ Tech on the PD system. And now to start us with as our first presenter will be Cecilia Garcia, Clover Elementary's teacher and CIT. Go ahead, Ms. Garcia. I'm going to stop sharing so you can share your screen. Can, are you able to see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen. Can you see me? Okay. So what I have been working on in my campus, uh, my principal really wanted to have the students work um, on a platform that looked like the STAR test, as close as possible to the STAR test. And especially our biggest concern right now was having the students type uh, I know that they do like their keyboarding lessons and their typing.com, but just actually having them type and organize their extended constructive response. So we have been using EdSight at our school. Um, and EdSight actually has already the STAR test available. So if we go to assignments on top, there's already the collection of all the STAR tests um, since 2016, all the way to last year's. Start test. So they're able to practice the reading and the math on there already. But what we have been doing is not only the collection of assignments that there's already available. Um, for example, these for reading are really, really cool because they have like the hot text available already and like the short constructor response. But you can also create your own assignments. So if we go to create assignment, we can scroll down and click on create new. So when we click on create new, what we have been using it for is the extended constructor response. So we will go to the writing response here and just click on essay response in this corner. So once we create our question, it's a little tricky and it takes a while, but um, it's been working really well. So if we see here, this is where we would click to add our passages. So once we click on this little frame right here, we're able to add our passages. The only thing is that when we add a passage, it cannot be in PDF format and it cannot be a whole file together. So what we do is we take like a little snippet, a little screenshot of our passage or our text or whatever they're going to be responding from. And we will add it here manually and it has to be done one by one and it cannot be in a PDF format. So my best suggestion is to just screenshot it and save it as a, as a picture. And then. Once we do this, our picture will and I'll show an example at the end of what it looks like. Our passage would be here on the side, which is how the star test is going to look like at the end. And then here we will put our instructions for the response for their essay, and then they have free range to start typing here. So then once we do that, I'm going to show you um, an example of what it looks like complete. So for example, here we had our Sandcastle one, the essay. And when I click on it, this is what it looks like once the kids are able to see it. So we have our essay, our passage on the side, and they're able to come in here and type their extended constructor response. Also, we have been teaching our students how to indent because we know they have to organize their text once they type it the day of the story test. So we've just been showing them like to indent. Uh, we kind of made like a little rule 
where they will click space five times, enter to create a new paragraph, and then space five times. So they have to have their four paragraphs at the end of their essay. And this is just what it looks like. Also, they have to be able to differentiate between the short constructor response, which doesn't have a lot of explanation in the instructions, to um, an extended one. So let's see. So then if we scroll down here, this would be more of the extended. So they have to be able to differentiate between their three sentence passage that their three sentence paragraph that they're writing for a short constructed and then their extended, which they do need four different paragraphs indent and um, just separate that organization. So this is what we have. And then we are able to share with each other. So I'm able to share with my coworkers. I'm usually the one that does the the fun ed side assignments because they do take a little bit longer. <laughs> so once I click here, once I have my assignment complete, the only things that you do have to make sure that whenever you have your assignment, that it needs to be active. So it will go from being a draft to being active. If it's not active, you're not able to assign it to your students on Google Classroom. And again, I'm the one that shares the my my assignments with the other teachers and I will click here invite on the very bottom. Oops. I will click invite. And I'm able to send to them and then once they receive it, they're able to assign to their students in their Google Classroom. So it's pretty neat. Um, then once we're done, once they complete their assignment, we're able to go see their different responses. So if I go here, then I will click on my summary report. And if I click on their name, then I will get their response, how it looks once it's typed in and complete. So here we see that the organization is just not there. Um, but if we go to a different student, it will look different. So yes, yeah, so that's what we have been working on. Does anybody have any questions? This is really cool. Thank you for sharing that. Am I, did you, so like a lot of the stuff you also created? Yeah, so uh, not so much created, but the passage, whatever passage or little magazine article, whatever we find, usually one of the other teachers is very good at creating a prompt for it. So then he'll write a question for it and then I'll go on Ed site and I will create the assignment for them to be able to go on there and respond. And then um, we'll usually and then we're able to show them their responses and kind of like OK, well, let's look at this one in it and we can print without the name on top. Mm -hmm. So it's like, OK, well, what do you see what that's wrong with this one? What can we change? What can we add? So it provides great feedback. Yeah, it's great. And like Davis said, you made it look so easy. I do have a question for you. Hopefully this is yes. something cool and you will be willing to do. Do you think those that they're already created are able to be shared with other campuses as well so they can utilize them? Yeah, yeah, um, I know that if you decide like if teachers decide to share their assignments, then they can. Um, let me see how it, they can put it out to the library to where others can use it too. Perfect. So maybe we'll, we'll talk to you about it later. Um, I guess just something that just came into my mind. I'm like, it would be really cool if we start creating like a district library. So right now, like everybody's trying to do stuff and I feel like this was greatly done. Great job. Thank, Thank you. you. Especially because we know it's going to take them so long to type. Mm -hmm. that I feel like if they get the practice and especially organizing the passages to the their paragraphs with the indentation and separating like that's against yes. them. And sometimes I'm 
I have to proofread it. I go back and I see misspelled words because on the exam, it's not going to show. It's not going to be like this word. It's not going to yeah. do the squiggly red line. On yeah. Great job. Thank you so much for sharing, Cecilia. And I'll definitely be getting back Thank to you on hopefully being able to share that. Uh, OK. And uh, do, 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 do. let me go next. And now we will have next Gabriela Santoscoy, our teacher in CIT for Garza Peña Elementary. She will be talking to you about good notes. I made it. You made it. Yay. I will kind of run over here. So I'm here. <laughs> Got it. Great. I'll stop sharing and now you're able to share your screen. So if I'm going to, because I'm going to use my iPad, since it mainly involves the iPad, am I going to share from the iPad or how am I You gonna... can share from the iPad. Yeah. Just log okay. in. Uh, when you log into Teams and to this Team Meet, make sure that you don't transfer. Just put that you're going to be uh, logging in from another device okay. so you can share the screen on the iPad and then we can see your pretty face on this in, on this uh, okay. camera. Let me see. Going. Okay, can you see it? Yes, we can Yay! see it. Yay! Okay, cool. Okay, so let's see. Sure, what's I gonna do? One second, I just wanna make sure I start the right way. Okay, so hello everyone. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So mine is basically more for like teacher use where teachers can use their iPad to be in the power zone. I've done this training a couple of times actually, and I'm going to do a refresher next week just because we came back from spring break. I even forgot a little bit like how to upload what to do with my documents. So this is going to be a very good refresh on how to upload documents from your OneDrive, your SharePoint up into GoodNotes to be able to annotate and walk around um, in the class. So basically the first thing we're going to do is make sure that we're logged in to OneDrive is a little blue cloud. OK, and then from here, I always tell the teachers are going to go click where it says curriculum here towards the bottom. I hope you can see that. There you go. All right, so from curriculum, depending what grade level you are, of course, I would do elementary. Um, you can basically do it for any subject, especially. I mean, I love doing it for math, so I teach first grade. So from here, of course, we have all of the six weeks. I'll go ahead and do for the six, six weeks coming up. Um, so I'm going to annotate Spanish copy. I mean, sorry, the student copy. So from here, this is where we're going to take this document into GoodNotes. So we're going to click on the upper right hand corner with a little like arrow pointing up. You're going to see this little box from here. You're going to click on the three little dots. From here, you want to save to files. OK. And then from here, I usually just save it onto my iCloud drive and then you're just going to go ahead and click save. Now that's the first part. The second part after you have uploaded your uh, you save there. Sorry, you save your documents into uh, your iCloud. You go click on good notes. Sorry, let me get out of this. OK. So this is what GoodNotes looks like. Of course, I mean, I have a lot more stuff open, but you're going to click where it says new. You are going to want to import. Now here, of course, I mean, I have several documents, but you would import the document that you want to annotate on GoodNotes. So mine would be the first grade student copy. I'm going to click and then go to open. Mm -hmm. And then now we're on good notes and you're able to start annotating and basically writing and working around with the students. Of course, this does involve you using montage, so you would use your new line board, connector montage, and then you know that's a whole other type of um, text session that could happen. But basically, um, once you're connected on montage, you can move around the room using your iPad and I mean you can even let the kids I use your like pen and even work out the problems from your iPad. So I've actually used that and I mean the kids get into it. They like me being able to use my iPad. So from here, I mean you would just solve the problems because the kids can see it. But that's basically what I do specifically for math and what my other coworkers have been doing. But let's see, let me go back and show you. You can also create notebooks. So let me go back and show you one that I created. 
unnecessarily. So I like to do one for reading where I do like the fur model for vocabulary. And I just like I get into like the whole colors because I get to like customize my colors. I get to add different colors. So I get I mean, I really love it. For me, it's very it makes it fun. Um, but other than that, I mean, it's very quick and easy on how to upload documents from OneDrive into your GoodNotes. And you can upload as many as you would like. Um, so basically, that's like the first part. It was going to be like super quick and easy. I hope I didn't go too fast. Did I? I don't know. I feel like I, I was like, did I go fast? You, were, yes. did, you did a good job. Oh, OK. I, I was like, I'm I like, did put two I pictures, images of documents that you can feel free to share with your teachers on how to do exactly what you just explained, but it's like a little screenshot. So you can see it on the chat. I put them in there from okay. OneDrive to uh, GoodNotes and from Google Drive to GoodNotes as well. Okay. So feel free to share. Okay, basically. Oh, another thing that um, I taught my teachers was because I mean, okay, if you look at the notebooks on GoodNote, some of the paper here obviously is not what the students have on their like on their notebooks. So what I taught them to do is to upload like images. For example, let's say, I mean, for the primary grades, we like to use the primary paper. So I'll uh, upload an image. And for the most part, sorry, I have a lot of images. I'll like screenshot a picture of like a primary paper. And then I'll use this to journal write with them and I'll be able to uh, guide them as we write together. So you can and if you want to make a copy like you want this uh, the same picture, you just swipe to the left and it'll make several copies as many as you want and you'll be able to see. You can just keep adding as more as many as you need. But I mean, you can do so many things with GoodNotes. I mean, I've obviously experimented a lot as you can tell I have a lot of notebooks but I mean those are the main things that I uh, told my teacher when I gave my tech session that was like the main thing that I focused on was having them be able to use their iPads to move around the room and not just stay stuck you know to the projector or you know sitting down to the t or at the table um, so this makes it's a very good way to be able to walk around and make sure you know everybody's on task but that's basically it for the uploading the documents from the OneDrive to the GoodNotes. Now, the second part of what I wanted to show you. So I'm not sure if everybody has one or um, so. I mean, of course, I went and bought the Apple Pencil. I mean, I, I went out and bought it by myself during the pandemic. So I mean, that was my own purchase. But my campus actually last semester went ahead and ordered us the Logitech Pencil. So all of us were able to have, well, we all have an iPad and we have a Logitech pencil, so it works very good. It's very compatible, so either or works. I prefer, of course, the Apple Pencil. Now for this one, what I wanted to show you guys, let me see, where did it go? Okay, so this one's going to be where you're able to turn like your scribble to text. So um, here, the first thing we want to do is we're going to go into our settings app. There you go. There it is. All right, so on the settings app, you're going to find where it says Apple Pencil. Now mine's already turned on, but for for um, almost everybody, it was switched off. So you would turn on your Scribble and then it even gives you like a little tutorial on how to try Scribble. So when you click try Scribble, uh, it'll tell you uh, try writing a few words here. So you could put you could put hello and then you'll see how it'll start typing it out for you. Hello, I'm happy, right? Now, uh, it'll show you how to delete. So if you want to delete something, you basically would scratch out a word. Whoops, go back. Or like this. That's how you delete. If you want to select, you basically draw a line over the word. Or you circle. And then you can also insert words into the sentence. So this is a good little option for you to try out before you actually go to GoodNotes and actually start using the scribble to text option, just so you can sort of practice and get the hang of it. So once you have done that part, okay, now you can leave your settings alone. You can jump back into GoodNotes. And for example, let's say I'm gonna open my reading notebook. So of course, I mean, from you, what you can tell, I mean, my handwriting can be a little bit messy when I do um, writing on good notes. So I really like the scribble to text option just because it helps me keep my writing very organized. 
Um, so now once you're here on good notes, of course you can you have different styles of pen you can choose from. I always just choose the ballpoint pen. Now from here, for example, you're going to click. There's two ways to do it. I'm going to teach you one way. Now, the first way to do it is you're going to click on the little. Let me see if I can get the. On this little box with the teeth, it's a little text box and then you'll be able to see that there's different fonts. Uh, you also have different sizes of fonts and you can change the colors. You can customize colors. OK, so that's what we're going to click now from here. You're just going to click anywhere on your page. And you're going to open up a text box. So the text box is open on any on the side or wherever on the paper. You can basically start just sorry. Hold on. The keyboard. Hold on. Why is it not opening? Both are having a technical difficulty. One second. Hold on. Let me switch my pens. This freeze. Oh my gosh. Hello. Hello. Well, this is great. I swear this works because I've tried it several times already. I've been using this a lot. For some reason, it doesn't want to open. OK, there you go. We're getting somewhere. OK, sorry about that. OK, so for example, let's say I'm just writing randomly. So whatever you write on the side of the uh, of the text box or on the bottom, it'll start typing it for you into the box. So hello. Today. And it'll automatically space it for you. So hello, today is Thursday. And then so let's say you can also whoops, you can also change the font of it. So for example, I'd like to do a lot of the marker felt tip. You can change the size of it. Big as you want it or as small as you want it, depending. You can also change the color. And then let's say you want to delete a word, so then that, that's a course we would go back to the tutorial where you would basically scratch out the word. And then you can come back and write it. And there you go. So again, that was you click on the little text box, you uh, insert it on the paper. And then you can just keep changing your fonts. You have a lot of options to choose from. I, of course, just try to choose the most basic ones, but of course you do have, you know, the pretty cursive ones. Um, something like this. So, I mean, there's different ways to do this, but this was the easiest way on how to do a scribble to text option using your notes. So, for example, I can show you an example that I did with like a fair model. So I did the same thing. I wrote out the word leader and it turned it into text. I did my definition. I did my sentence. And then, I mean, of course, you can come in and just, you know, illustrate a picture. So this is something that I incorporate a lot um, in reading. Just because, I mean, as you can tell, sometimes my handwriting can be a little bit messy. So this for me is a game changer. It definitely helps me stay very neat and it helps my students see what they're actually, you know, writing is not too messy for them. But that's basically the scribble, the sorry, the scribble to text option on GoodNotes. So I hope, oh my God, I'm like, I'm like, I hope I didn't go too fast. I can go back a step if I need to, but that's basically, I mean, it's very basic. You just click on the little text box with the T at the top you uh, click anywhere on the paper that you want your text box and then you start writing. And then it starts to automatically type. But that's basically how you use scribble to text. So I'm like, I hope I did OK. I really tried. <laughs> oh, OK.
You did amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yay. But yeah, I'm like one of those that has become very like organized with like my writing. I'm like a perfectionist now. I was never mm -hmm. that before and teaching has made me that. So now I look for ways where I can just be perfect and like everything that I do for notes because <laughs> now I can't stand seeing my messy handwriting. No, but I'm like, do you know for the lines, if you click on the shapes, on the yeah. little shapes one, it will do straight lines. Ooh. Oh, yeah, that one's so true. Just for you to know. Ooh. <laughs> I, see, I learned something new, too. Thanks. And then also, if you uh, go a little bit more, there's a lot more tools. There's a picture one. You can actually add a picture of an image of whatever oh. you need and you annotate on it as well on the page. <laughs> Yeah, perfect. Cool. Yeah, I like love good notes. Yeah, my favorite. It's my favorite app. So I'm so happy we have it because I actually like bought it like during the pandemic, like before you guys had good notes. Mm -hmm. So I yeah, I first bought it and then once I found out that it was finally available, I was so excited because I like, yeah, I it was it was a simple fix. I'm like, actually, yeah. I had one of my one of my campuses that was using it. Mm -hmm. And I told him, like, hey, maybe you can talk about it. And he shared with me some stuff. And then I was looking at the registration page yeah. and it says free for education. Mm -hmm. So then we ran with that and we got it. We got it for yeah, everyone. So that was cool. Awesome. I mean, like, it's awesome. We I like free. It. So thank you for letting us have good notes. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you for, so much for sharing. Is there any questions from anybody here? If there's not, I'm going to stop the recording.